there's no little critters in there. <laughs> okay, take two. I forgot to turn the recorder on. Um, we're here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, and it's kind of chilly out, but we're here with Russ and Jane Johnson, and they have this wonderful barn find. It's a 67 SS396, but not just any 396. This is the L78, the 375 horse, the big one, the rare car, and has a four speed. It's got original paint, original red paint. And Russ, There's you bought it when? I bought it in 1971. It's, uh, uh, what I've found is there's only 1138 that were produced with the uh, L78. And what's all this stuff on it here? I mean, <laughs> why, why all this stuff? I mean, well, just... the, it, it all comes down to it. the more room you have, the, the, the more stuff you don't throw away that you should throw away. You know, yeah, I understand some... you said that your, your, your kids uh, are grown up and they gave you what for Christmas? Uh, I don't know, for my birthday, it was birthday. just recently. They, uh, uh, gave us a, a dumpster, <laughs> so they given us the hint that they don't want to um, uh, clean out this pole shed when they're gone. So we have to start uh, uh, working on it and getting rid of the junk. And and this definitely is not junk underneath all, all so, those treasures. <laughs> well, we, we get to see a real treasure come out for the first time in many decades. So well, let's have at it here. I bought the car in uh, 1971 from um, uh, a Chevrolet dealership in Cadott, Wisconsin that uh, it had uh, spun main bearings and spun rod bearings and uh, I don't know the whole story what happened or how it got there that way but uh, I ended up buying the car for uh, $800 and uh, then I took it uh, to my cousin's um, farm and we parked it uh, uh, in his yard uh, until I could uh, uh, make a spot to uh, get it in the garage and um, uh, pull the engine out of it and, and uh, uh, round up um, another um, 396 um, that was compatible and that would um, bolt up and ended up with um, a three and a quarter horse 396 and put the um, heads and intake and um, uh, we did the heads on it and uh, put a service package cam in it and uh, set it up for drag racing and and uh, yeah, started out with um, the original 308 gears and and it uh, went through the um, the traps at uh, uh, 6,000 rpms in second gear at 97 miles an hour. So at the time, did you know it was an L78? In other words, a 375 horse, or was it just a, a SS 396 Camaro to you? Just SS396, it was a big block Camaro, and, and back in the day, uh, car guys talked there was really no substitution for uh, cubic inches, and so I know I wanted a big block, uh, and other friends had um, big block um, Chevrolets that they were had on the drag strip, and so we it was set up to, to um, drag race. So what we got here? Here's the original block. Um, I would, all the all the um, pistons, rods, everything are still with the, the block. They're not in it. It's four bolt main. It's got the correct numbers on it. Um, I'm gonna get it to a machine shop and probably have them clean it up and and tell me you know if it's a you know the block is good and go from there. To match numbers, start by opening the driver's side door and looking at the VIN plate on the inside of the A pillar. Here we see the last six digits are 163440. Now look at the stamping on the engine pad of the original block. And there you see the same 163440. That's a match. Next on that same engine pad there is an engine application suffix code. We see MR here and it's easy to look up MR. This application is a 375 horse 396 L78 option. Another key area to investigate is the trim tag which is riveted to the firewall above the master cylinder.
At the bottom we see option code 4K, which indicates the 396 was option code L78. Hopefully we get enough air holes. <laughs> It's gonna hold air? We'll see. Let's give it a try here. Roadrunner tires. That is, must be good. E7814s. Pumping air into that right front tire lifted that wheel right out of the hole that has made for itself over the last four or five decades. It's coming up. It was amazing the tire held air, but it did. Doesn't look like they can even pop the big beat on it. Well, that's holding air good, isn't it? So far. That should be good. The rear wheel had also sunk below the level of the ground. That's taking care of it. But when Russ aired the tire, pulled the wheel out of that rut. That's the one that didn't pop the bead. It's kind of magical. When Russ aired up this tire, I thought of the times when I pumped gas and six flats at Hale's Depot. The guy I worked with was named Raymond, and one day he wanted to time me to see how fast I could fix a flat on a manual machine. I got it off the rim, patched, back on the rim, and aired up in under two minutes. Two down. Starting to look like a car again. All right, so what do you think's in the trunk? Tires. <laughs> I don't know. Treasures. <laughs> hey, they work. Oh. I told you, tires. Oh, let me have to get a light to see them. Uh, Why are there two of them? Um, probably because these were on the front of the car and had slicks on the back when we uh, ran it at the drag strip. Um, this one still has air in it. Wow. Both of them have air in them. If that's the only thing in the trunk. E7814s. A little rust around the lower quarter panel. Is this a little scaliness? No, it's a it's a hole. Okay. <laughs> what really amazed me, I I was tapping on the inside of the trunk and everything appears really solid. It shows a little rust underneath, you know, but uh, I'm wondering if just um, uh, blasting it uh, will take a lot of that off, you know. Um, compared to a lot of Camaros you see that people have in for restoration uh, are just basket cases, you know. And this is really a solid car. Yeah. I don't feel any soft spots. I think the floors are pretty solid, huh? Yeah. Can you see under there? <laughs> Look at that. 
Nice metal. Yeah. Do you have the stock air cleaner housing? Um, uh, as soon as I check up above in the, um, the loft, um, there's a bunch of extra parts up there, which I'm not even sure what's up there anymore. I'm hoping there's a air cleaner base up there. I would think, I would think there is, but well, first of all, you can make your way back here. Original connecting rods. Ah, uh, this is pistons from another. Okay. Here is the original pistons and rods. Original exhaust manifolds for it. It's got the uh, plugs for the uh, smog emissions. And a factory Aluminum intake. Um, was that stock on the car or just an air? Uh, um, I'd have to look if this one was the stock one that came with the car or the one that's on the car is the stock one. It's either or. Um, probably have to do some research on that, but or unless they're the same, I don't know. Well, see what I can find of Camaro parts in the loft. from a 69 Firebird or 68 one of the two. Doug Thoroughly headers. I believe these are the original Caps. And I believe this is the original smog pump. One of the valve covers. There's the other valve cover. Looks like more smog equipment. <laughs> well, doesn't appear to have a build sheet. Nope. Good burlap under there, though. Is this first time you've had the seat out? Uh, as far as I can remember, um, I'm sure um, it was loose, so I must have taken it out for something. It doesn't have um, any headlights um, in it right now, and I was wondering where the bezels were for it. I didn't remember that part, but. Looking through the back here, I'll, I'll show you something. The trim and the bezels. <laughs> the reason they're not on the car, I had a, um, or I still have it, 73 Dodge van that I needed um, headlights for it. And so I robbed them off of this car and uh, I thought, well, I'll get new ones for this and well, this is how far it got. <laughs> Think it'll see daylight? <laughs> Think it'll make that turn and get out of here? Well, let's see. 
First of all, the wife needs the Polish seat cover. See, she says it's a little dusty inside. So, getting it ready so she can steer. Of course, maybe she'll want to keep the car. <laughs> oh, it looks better than it did. You want to keep it now, Jane? I'm uh, not sure yet. <laughs> not, how do I crawl into it? <laughs> no, it's like, There's no little critters in there. <laughs> through the years, did people try and buy this car from you? Oh, yeah. How did they know it was here? Uh, <laughs> um, back in the day when I raced it, I'd go around and get parts, and, and uh, uh, people would comment, you know, well, when are you going to sell me that Camaro? And um, I always use the standard answer I'll, I'll put you, your name on the list. And uh, uh, it never went any further than that. Um, I had uh, a guy come over uh, last fall. Um, he heard it through the grapevine that somebody said I was uh, selling the Camaro. And uh, I sent the picture to another friend. You know, he was doing a uh, 55 Chevy. And I says, well, here's another project. Just, you know, joking them. And uh, didn't they know it's really not for sale, you know, and well, it must have went through the grapevine, and, and this guy talked to this uh, other guy, and he said, well, the car's for sale, you know, and all of a sudden I got a knock on my door, and he says, well, you know, I hear you got a car for sale, you know, and I says, well, not really, I says, but, it's kind of smelly. you know, you can <laughs> take a look at it, it's buried, you know, you can't see much of it, you know, and, and he was ready to buy it, you know, but I says, well, not at this point, it's, I'm not, ready you know and uh, this was last fall you know well, what got me thinking and got me going was when uh, the daughter gave us a certificate for the dumpster and and you think well yeah there's a lot of junk here should be just tossed you know and so that's where we're going right now 73,923.4 120 mile an hour speedometer it's got a uh, the tack it red lines uh, at 6,000 RPMs. Uh, it's got the AM radio. It's got the, the cluster with fuel gauge, temperature gauge, clock, oil pressure, and battery. It's got a Hurst 4 speed. And I have the original shifter. I, I saw it up in the pole shift or in the loft, but couldn't get to it. The guy that um, bought the car new lives um, in the same town here I found out about a week ago and he bought it um, new in, in uh, when he was in service in um, California, built in, in Los Angeles. He actually ordered the car uh, new and it, he said it, he waited, I don't know, two or three months to get the car and then he drove it back to um, uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin and he had it until um, 71 and then he uh, traded at a um, dealership in um, uh, Chitek, Wisconsin for a, a Nova, an SS Nova and then uh, uh, that car was, was resold to a girl and uh, the girl that had it uh, actually went to college in, in Eau Claire and there's um, a sticker on it that uh, um, a parking sticker for University of uh, Wisconsin Eau Claire. What I've researched about the 396 um, L78-375 horse is there was 1138 made in uh, 67. So it is a pretty rare car. It's the basic model with um, no disc brakes, um, no power steering, AM radio. Um, it's um, the bare um, necessities for um, a muscle car. Won't it be kind of sad to sell it though? I mean, won't it kind of make you feel sad? What do you think? Well, I've enjoyed it and I'll definitely be sad to see it go, but uh, I would really like to see it all redone and pictures of it. And that I could mount on the wall that this was Mike Merrill. And it lives on in pictures. So if you had, physically have the car or not, it hasn't been, hasn't seen the light and uh, outside in many moons. So um, if you have it 
under wraps, um, a picture is probably better.